It's Lauren with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art and I create colorful therapeutic animal art tutorials for daily creative quiet time. So in today's tutorial we will be painting this abstract horse. This is more intermediate level but definitely something beginners can do as well. I walk you through step by step and I have a traceable outline for this tutorial down below. And also this is the month of the rose. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So just as a thank you in the comment section down below within the next 24 hours, leave a comment with your favorite animal that you would like me to paint and I will choose the best one. And also in case you didn't know, I have a blog called 365 Days of Color. Just this year I set a goal for myself to create colorful animal art every single day this year for 10 minutes at least. Right now I'm working on an English Bulldog pet portrait. I'm working on a nautical commission and a wolf colored pencil and Copic markers drawing for the art collectors. So in case you wanna check that out, I have links to that also down below. But guys, let's get painting. All right. So like usual, you can access this traceable individually in a link below, or if you'd like to access all my old and upcoming YouTube channel traceables, reference photos, and material lists, you can find those all in one place in my new Dachshund tier, link down below. Now for today's Creative Quiet Time verse, it comes from Psalms 121.2. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, ever since I was a child, and especially after I watched the movie Spirit, I have been so fascinated by the strength, the grit, and the drive of a horse. It was this painting that led me to do a Google search of the word workhorse, and what came up, a horse used for plowing, hauling, and other heavy labor. And then the second part, a person who works tirelessly at a task and assumes extra duties. Now, even workhorses have limits. Humans that we assume are strong, they have limits. We all do. We're all so capable of incredible things. But with the Lord's help, the maker of the heavens and the earth, just imagine the mountains we can move. Whatever it is that we're trying to do in our own strength, in our own power, we have to maintain. I speak from experience that this is the common theme in my own life, I'm always trying to handle it, and so many times it takes me falling flat on my face, being in tears, feeling so weak and overwhelmed, that I finally say, all right, God, I've had enough, I can't do this on my own. And ironically, that's when breakthrough happens, and the fruit is revealed in my weaknesses. If you really want to be productive in your art, in your business, or as a mother, stop trying to be so strong. We are strong, yes but we need something far stronger, a supernatural God that we can depend on when we feel so weak. It's that sustaining strength that can help us overcome or get through and triumph over things like grief, betrayal, loss, addiction, depression. These are all parts of life. So take the pressure off right now. Allow yourself to take five deep breaths in and out Grab that cup of tea and a warm blanket, and let's get painting. Using my size 4 Orteza round brush, I'm going to mix up my Prisma Violet with Burnt Sienna. And I'll be applying all the darkest values to the horse first. I wanted to use all kinds of abstract colors in the horse, and I didn't want those to clash with the background colors. So that's why I started with the horse first. So just looking at the horse, I'm seeing dark grays and dark browns and tans around the head, neck, and legs. So for these first couple layers and colors, I'm just going to look for those areas. There's very little light hitting the bottom of the horse, so I'll basically outline the belly and the chest and fill in majority of the limbs with this color.
If your colors look a little transparent right now, I would say add a little bit more of your burnt sienna. You may even want to add some burnt umber. Sometimes if you add too much of your purple in here, that becomes a little more light than you want it. So the medium values that we lay over top this won't really look like a medium value. So we want to make sure that this is pretty dark. Now look closely at those two front legs. We see that it's dark in between them and at the top, but it's more of a gray color inside the tops of both legs. I see some of our dark value on the outside of this leg, and then it's gonna be around the middle to the bottom of the other leg. So I'll fill this color in, not quite up to the top, but almost. Now I'm not bringing this darkness all the way up this leg. We have a lighter color that we can use for it at the top. So I'll stop it, just watch where I do that. And then I'll start working up the neck and then from the neck to the jaw and then the snout. I was really hesitant to take this color over top the hair, but what I realized is with that hair, we'll have to use almost black to make it stand out over top this dark value. Now, horse heads have always challenged me. There's so much muscle tone, even in their faces. And I, the way this horse, the way his head is positioned, we're getting a really strong light source and then a really strong highlight on the left side of his face. So what I'll do is I'll pull in some yellow ochre into this previous mixture. I'll blend it in along the jaw and then I'll go even lighter, adding some white. So I'm hugging that value but also filling in some more white on the face gradually going from our dark to more of a medium value here to really light on the bridge of the nose Now going even lighter, working wet into wet, 
blending that in very carefully on the top of above the eye and along the bridge of the nose all the way down to that nostril. I'll blend this highlight in. I'm going to grab my 2-0 Arteza spot brush and just with black I'm going to fill in the eyes and then I'll also fill in the nostrils. Now I know this is tricky to see because we painted over it with our maroon color, but I'm going to be very careful to outline the mouth with this black. All right, so we have our base on the face now. We need to apply a base to the rest of the body. I'm gonna mix up more of my Prisma Violet and Burnt Sienna, and then into that, some raw sienna. We wanna go just a shade lighter, because now we're gonna hug those dark values, and we'll also paint over some of the white. I'm still working out from where I see those dark shadows. So now I'm gonna use some yellow ochre into that previous color, and I'm gonna work on the chest with this medium value. It's more of a medium to dark value, actually. I would say right now, this very color will use quite a bit of it. So mix up some more so you have enough. And again, I'm just hugging those darker values, not painting over them entirely, and then also painting over a lot of the white. And I'm applying this color to all the areas where I see that medium to dark gray in the horse. All right, now let's go a shade lighter, adding in yellow ochre this time, and a little bit of white. I find this just isn't light enough, so I add in a little bit of white just to get the next step lighter. Now before I move on to adding more lightness to this color, I want to make sure I use it to capture the other medium to light values on the chest. I'm even going to, it's sort of blending in right now because this side is still wet for me. It'd be even better if it was slightly tacky or dry, but I'm, I'm being a little bit more specific here with getting those shapes over top the layers instead of filling in 
areas. All right, so now I can add in more white. See how I'm just going a little bit lighter each time? So I still have some of that previous yellow ochre in this paint mixture. Now it's just a smidge lighter. Now I want to note right here, the previous color of yellow ochre we were using, that previous paint mixture, we go back to, to join this highlight with that previous color on the around the belly. Okay, so you make sure that you work quickly enough so that you can blend that in while it's wet. Now when I applied that little highlight to the leg, I joined my raw sienna and yellow ochre mixture so that I can create this highlight that I see right here above that leg. Now if you step back, you'll notice that there's some different colors on the face compared to the body. In our painting, that is. We need to have some more yellow in the face, so that's why I'm pulling some of that white and yellow ochre along the forehead and down the bridge of the nose. Now throughout this tutorial, you'll notice that I mix up colors real fast. So I'll tell you right there, I mixed up yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white. That's the same color. I see that we still need more joiner medium values along the chest. Now we can't forget those ears. I'm gonna mix up Prisma Violet, Burnt Sienna, and Raw Sienna. That's the same color as what I'm mixing right here. My colors are still wet, the ones that we previously mixed on my paint palette, but just in case yours are dry, those are the same colors. All right, we're just gonna take a second and refresh our dark colors, just adding more pigment to them. So all the areas we started with adding color, let's just add some more. That was Burnt Sienna, Prisma Violet, and I'm actually adding a little bit of black here. Now only in the darkest darks. I'll be only applying this to the areas that are the absolute darkest. So you'll notice that I'll still leave some of our Burnt Sienna and our Prisma Violet. And this color will actually be the one we use to create the hair. Now, because we added black, that'll really stand up over top the original base of Prisma Violet and Burnt Sienna. Now for the neck, I recommend you watch me before trying this. I'm only gonna add this darkness to two parts of the neck, not underneath where we're gonna have the hair, because we want that area to be lighter so that the black hair stands up over top of that. Now, right before we work on that hair and the tail, I'm gonna add a little bit more of my Burnt Sienna and Prisma Violet here. And then we'll go back to that color using my size one liner brush, and I'll fill in the rest of the white we have on that forehead, and then bring the hair down in little in clumps. And I'll also have some of that hair kind of cutting into the background as if it's kind of blowing in the wind. So if you notice, I'm creating sections of hair that are curved around that neck at the top, 
and they cut in just a little bit at the top where they are kind of curved out. They look like a little bump. To make this look more natural, like the wind is blowing in the horse's hair, I'm gonna use the tip of my brush to create little wispy hairs around the forehead and behind the ears. All right, let's move on to the tail. I'm going to use my size 4 round brush again. I'm just going to fill, use this color to fill in the top of the tail, come down a little before the middle of the tail, and then we'll start pulling some other colors in there while it's wet. So now while that's wet, I'm going to literally pull in just yellow ochre into that. It'll blend a little bit. That's okay because we want that to become more of a medium to dark value. Then we want it to get a little bit lighter. And that's where I'll add a little bit more of yellow ochre and white this time so that the area where it's flowing into the water is the lightest part of the tail. Now here's a cool little artist tip. I'm going to take any smaller detail brush than what I was using and I'm going to pull that darkness, the burnt sienna and prism violet, into the yellow ochre. This helps to separate that hair and it just looks like it's more flowy, more natural looking. Now take a second to do some touch-ups to your horse before we work on the background. I have to fix that eye, it looks a little wonky, so I'm going to mix up yellow ochre and white. I'm just going to flatten the top out a little bit more, and then I'm also going to use my black to touch up that eye, and the hair, as well as the nostril. That nostril needs to be a little bit bigger. Now I'm also going to take my yellow ochre and white mixture and with my size 1 round brush I'm just going to outline the backs of both ears. Alright, wonderful job! You've completed your stallion. Now we're going to move on to our background. I'm using my size 6 flat brush and I'm going to mix up orange with cadmium yellow. We're going to start with the top of the sky behind the mountains and then move into more adding more yellow into this orange mixture and then white. So we have a strong dominant orange at the top and then we'll blend it in horizontally to more of a yellow and then more of a yellow white closest to the bottom around the valleys of the mountains. Alright, so into that orange mixture I'm going to add in a more white and cadmium yellow and I'll blend that in horizontally, kind of like the second layer in our sky. And then closest to the bottom when we don't really see all of this valley because the horse is in the way, but this area right here is going to be like no orange and just yellow and white. I say this to my master class students all the time, a little tip for blending. I use quite a bit of white in my paintings and I use what's called golden fluid uh, titanium white. 
This is by Golden Bran, and it's a watery white because I notice that it's a lot harder to blend things like areas with a lot of surface area, like we're doing now, if it's really thick, creamy paint. I kind of like to mix my medium and heavy body paint with this fluid white. I have that link down below. It's the only white I buy. And here, if you notice, I'm actually just going over it again, just trying to mix all the colors together. If you do that, you might even find it easier to wash out your brush so it's just a little damp, not sopping wet. And that can also be a way that you can blend the colors. Alright, great. It's time to wash out our brushes now and we're going to move to one of my new favorite colors. It's called Gray Purple and I'm going to mix Gray Purple equal parts to Prisma Violet. My blue is actually dry. I'm not mixing blue and still using my Arteza flat brush. I'm going to start with the ocean the furthest away and start working up towards the foreground. Now, if you'd like to master animal art, maybe learn how to paint your household pets or accept pet portrait commissions, I've created the online animal art masterclass for creatives 15 and up at the beginner, intermediate, and advanced level. My tutorials come with traceable printouts or drawing instructions, reference photos, material lists, artist tips, and I just recently uploaded my new pet portrait commission course if you're interested in making a little bit of passive or even full-time income from your pet portraits. I even host a monthly challenge where I provide a tutorial for creatives to follow so that they never fall into artist block. So if you're interested in making these colorful pet portraits and wildlife paintings, you can find that in the links down below. But let's get back to painting our purple lake.
All right, so into this paint mixture, what I'm going to do is mix in some white and into the wet paint on my canvas already, only around the limbs am I going to add this color. So I'll blend it into the purples and blues around the limbs, as well as pull it forward into the foreground and front of the limbs. Now be patient here and take your time. This ocean doesn't have to be perfectly blended. We're going to put lots of different lines and designs inside of it. And even if you need a second layer over top to smooth things out, that's still an option and it's not the end of the world. It may just take a little while longer. Once more, I'm going to add in more white to the area in front of our horse in the foreground. Now, not quite this light, but a little bit lighter than it is, I'll mix in a medium value of this white, gray, purple, and prisma violet right behind the foreground area. And I have a lot of little areas to paint in now with that color. So I'll move to a detail brush again. I'm using my 2-0 Arteza spot brush just to get in around the rest of the white around the back legs. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the mountains. I did add some more phthalo blue to my paint palette, it dried, and I'm moving back to my size six flat brush. And with a clean damp brush, I'm gonna use phthalo blue and prisma violet. We're gonna start pulling out those dark blues in our painting or in the ocean from that gray purple, as well as adding in more purples. And this will complement that beautiful, those oranges and yellows in our sky and the yellows in our horse. This really does look like something from the movie Spirit. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. And so does baby Zachary.
Now we mustn't forget to do our sides as well while we're on this color. And this is actually the last step of part one. So guys, if it's already up, head on over to part two once you're finished here. But if not, I'll be posting that next week. Now don't forget to post your favorite animal if you already haven't in the comment section below. Baby Zachary and I wish you an early happy Valentine's Day. We'll see you soon. Bye.